So I'm the Ecosia on Campus uh, co-founder, where I'm supporting students at universities to campaign for Ecosia. Um, and I also get involved in organizations, organizational support. So when a company wants to switch to Ecosia and, and track its impact as an organization, um, I sort of am there to, to help them with uh, some of those technical questions and to onboard companies to, to use Ecosia. Uh, and I'm also in charge of user support. So um, yes, sort of getting back to, to users that reach out with tech support questions or just questions about where Ecosia plants trees. Um, and actually, quite excitingly, we actually have a, um, a, a job um, a description at the moment um, for um, a sort of a part-time role to support us with um, some of our user support, um, which I'm also happy to share with you later on because, uh, yeah, we're currently um, looking for, for applicants. So maybe a bit more about that later, but um, that's, that's pretty much me and, and my role at Ecosia. Um, and yes, also with, with university presentations like this, <clears throat> um, I graduated um, I think it was in two, uh, 2019, um, and uh, I, I studied anthropology when I was at university. So some of the examples that I'm going to give today about Ecosia's tree planting projects often focus on the uh, social impact of planting trees as well. So that's just kind of um, you know part of my interest that will that will come through in in the presentations um, as as we go. So what is Ecosia? Um, any presentation about Ecosia really needs to start from the beginning. So <clears throat> as I'm sure most of you are aware, Ecosia is the search engine that plants trees. Um, and Ecosia makes money just like any other search engine, which is from users clicking on the ads displayed in its search results. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> but what makes Ecosia so different is that it uses the money that it makes from advertising to fund tree planting projects around the world. And to date, Ecosia has planted over 125 million trees. And these are across um, you know, the planet's biodiversity hotspots and parts of the world where they're, they're really needed the most. Um, Ecosia has 15 million monthly active users, um, which represents one of the largest collectives of people which are tackling climate change. Um, and um, and over, the, over the past few years, Ecosia has really grown um, in size and, and, and throughout its user base. And um, Ecosia has been, been running now for, for over 10 years, but the growth in the past couple of years has, has really been um, exponential through more people using Ecosia and, and making it their default search engine. So where does Ecosia actually plant trees? Currently, Ecosia has 60 projects across uh, 30 countries. And as I mentioned, we really like to focus our tree planting in biodiversity hotspots. And these are the parts of the planet which scientists have recognized as um, areas which contain a unique and biodiverse range of, of plants and animal species. Um, so there are biodiversity hotspots across all of the continents. But um, the example I like to give is the island of Madagascar. Um, so, you know, Madagascar is, uh, you know, an, an island separated from the, the, the continent of Africa. And on this island, like, um, life has evolved in its own uh, sort of unique, um, unique way. Um, so there's plants and animals here that really can't be found anywhere else because it's kind of um, evolved in, in its own um, uh, sort of isolation, as, uh, if you will. So um, these are the, the areas of the, of, of the planet where um, it's really important to plant trees because often they've, they're areas that are facing deforestation because of um, you know, products like palm oil, which I'll, I'll go into a little bit further. Um, but uh, these are where we focus uh, primarily our, our, our tree planting for the environmental uh, benefits of, of, of um, supporting biodiversity. And this map actually is a little bit dated now and needs, needs to be updated. Uh, we, we've signed new contracts in India um, where we're planting, um, I, uh, I think it's about um, 50,000 trees that our first project was because because it was a, um, a, a new project with a new partner, we like to sort of begin slowly with, with a partner and um, and sort of help them to scale. Um, so projects often start small and then and then in time um, progress to, to plant um, you know more trees. Um, we also have now projects in in uh, Malawi and Australia, um, which I'll probably talk about a little bit further as well. And so one of the main questions is why trees and uh, why are trees so important and why should we be planting them? So Ecosia's 125 million trees now um, are busy sequestering uh, between one and three point tons of carbon dioxide each year. Um, when you plant this uh, amount of trees, it really does have um, you know, a, an impact on the, on the, the, the planet's biosphere. Um, you know, they're sequestering huge amounts of, of carbon um, and the way that we calculate this, this, this number, and I, I understand that, you know, between one and 
3.5 tons is is quite a quite a large difference and that's partly because it's so difficult to accurately calculate uh, the amount of carbon sequestered by trees but Ecosia uses the data set of, of trusted um, reliable sources including the, the wind rock, rock um, uh, database um, to, to sort of to provide an accurate accurate, accurate estimate estimate estimation of uh, how many how much carbon is sequestered and instead of doing this by like a, on a, a tree basis this is worked out by hectare so when we plant trees at uh, one of our sites we uh, we work out how much biomass has been um, sort of increased within that hectare and then this gives us a more accurate way of measuring the amount of carbon that's been sequestered and so as well as the global environmental benefits of, of planting trees um, trees also bring benefits to, to, to people as well um, and every project serves a unique purpose. And so, for example, these these trees um, in in this uh, in this presentation right now is uh, they're from one of our projects in Senegal. And as you can see on the top right, this tree is planted as part of an agroforestry system with crops growing around it. Um, and these crops are only sort of able to grow there because of the trees uh, increasing the amount of shade and improving the soil fertility of the land which in turn then leads to a higher crop yield for farmers and also a more nutritious harvest overall. And so planting trees as part of agroforestry systems brings this um, you know, added benefit to the local people, um, providing alternative sources of income and also um, you know, restoring degraded land. And at our project in Ethiopia, which is with an environmental and humanitarian NGO called Green Ethiopia, over the years, we've planted nine million trees with this project. And as I mentioned, these trees are planted as, as part of an agroforestry system. And on the right here, you can see um, like a lush tomato field in the middle of the, you know, the Ethiopian desert. Um, and this kind of um, agroforestry and, and this, this kind of um, harvest is only possible through, through the planting of trees. And another interesting fact about this project is that it's primarily run by women. Um, and it's mainly the women which do the, the tree planting. And this is because um, during the tree planting season, that time of year, um, lots of the men would go into the local cities to try and find, um, you know, sources of income because initially there wasn't really much to do on on the on the dry and barren uh, barren land. Um, but this project has really empowered the local women here um, to to sort of uh, plant trees and um, you know have an alternative source of income. Um, and now they're sort of contributing to, to the family at a time when money was scarce and the men would be leaving um, that locality to, to find um, sort of uh, income from elsewhere. So it's a, a really great project, which is, um, you know, sort of supporting, supporting um, a, a range of people. And I'm just going to share one of the videos from um, the project in Ethiopia um, as Almaz really does tell the story. Uh, better than I can. So I'm just going to share this now. My forest, the river came back. Its banks are full of water, even in the dry season. My name is Almas. I'm from Safa in Ethiopia, and I have two children, two hens, two goats, and one husband. Before planting the trees, I collected sand from the river for 20 cents. It was hard work and dangerous too. But my life is different now. With other women in my village, I am planting a forest on communal land. Thanks to the trees that Ecosia and Green Ethiopia have provided, our fields have become more productive. Collectively, we were able to save almost $500. We kept track of our savings in a little book. Before, we hardly had any savings at all. Some families did not even have enough food, but now we can all send our children to school. On my farm, I grow coffee and bananas. Since I planted the shade trees and fruit trees here, my yield has improved because the sun no longer dries out the soil. Every year, I harvest more coffee than before and sell it on the market. We want to continue reforesting our land. As women are pioneers. With your support, we have improved our land and the lives of our families. If you don't forget us, I know that we will continue to see change. It will be outstanding. Well, 
Well, I'm just trying to go back to the presentation here. After we see how that works. Um, Hmm. I think if you go on the plus again, and then you can choose uh, the presentation oh, yeah. again. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Uh, it says that is the current presentation. Um, stop sharing external video. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So from Ethiopia to one of our new projects in Australia, um, and if you can cast your minds back to the beginning of 2020, when we thought that the worst thing to happen last year would be the fires in, um, in Australia um, before COVID hit. Um, but um, what was interesting about this project is that even though the, the, the seasonal bushfires in, in Australia are, are to be expected and, and something that um, uh, you know, is, is, is part of the, um, you know, the, the natural environment there, what was, what was so shocking about the, the fires at the beginning of last year is that um, the flames were encroaching on land which should never have been burnt down in the first place. It wasn't part of the, the seasonal bushfire um, and what, what, why we wanted to find a, a partner to plant trees there is because um, we really thought that it was important to be uh, planting trees in like a, a, a subtropical region um, which should have never have been affected by the, the seasonal bushfires. And so the way that Ecosia funded this project is that we dedicated all of the revenue that we received from searches on a specific day um, and used that to invest in, in tree planting there. So um, from this dedicated day of, of, um, of sort of raising funds, uh, we managed to plant 26,000 trees um, in this area of, of Australia, um, really where um, they were sort of needed most and in an area where um, it should have never been affected in the first place. Um, and so it was really um, quick for us to to sort of find a, a, an established tree planting partner there um, that we that we sort of um, you know wanted to support, um, and it's been a, a partner that we're hoping to scale with um, in the years to come as well. And staying in the same region, um, and just hopping over to Indonesia. Um, so the, the the reason that Ecosia plants trees here um, is primarily to to sort of combat the palm oil industry. Um, as I'm sure some of you are aware, like Indonesia has faced uh, some terrible deforestation over the past years um, because of the need for, for, for this crop. And um, what's, what the Ecosia project does there is that it provides um, farmers with an alternative source of income. So as well as planting the native tree species, um, farmers and landowners that are working with, with this Ecosia project will plant sugar trees as well. And this is sort of a, an alternative to palm oil and uh, sort of a planting that in a, in, in a, in a biodiverse way with, with native trees uh, means that it doesn't degrade the land as well as, as uh, you know, harmful palm oil monocultures do. And so this is kind of the way that Ecosia is, yeah, battling the palm oil industry and hoping to bring back some, some orangutans to, to that sort of habitat. And so I've talked quite a bit about trees um, and, and sort of the impact of, of, uh, of, of tree planting projects on local people and on the environment. But let's go back a step and just ask, wait, how does Ecosia actually achieve this? And how does Ecosia make money? Um, so as I mentioned, we make money through users clicking on ads um, and we're completely transparent about all of our finances. So you can log on to the Ecosia blog and see exactly how much money we made um, each month and how much was invested into tree planting. You can also see a breakdown of how much has been um, spent on operational costs, um, including sort of employee salaries and how much we spent on marketing to sort of get the word, the word out there. And we generally say that we put 80% of our profits each month going into to tree planting. Um, and the other 20% is put into a reserve. And this ensures that Ecosia is always sustainable in its operations. And it also gives us a, a, a sort of fund that we can use to um, invest in other environmental initiatives that, that we sort of really, really want to get, get, get behind and support. And I'm just going to share with you another video, um, which is about um, the uh, solar panels that Ecosia invested in. Um, and this was using the uh, the money from the the twenty percent that we put aside um, that enables us to invest in projects like this. Mm -hmm. 
So here's the thing. The climate emergency is upon us. And if we want to make it through this, we have to plant millions of trees, which you know Ecosia does. But that's not going to be enough. We also have to say goodbye to fossil fuels once and for all and accelerate the transition to clean, renewable energy. All the experts agree. One of our highest priorities as a society has to be cuts to greenhouse gas emissions. So as a result, the move to renewable energies is absolutely critical as we attempt to try and address climate change. Ecosia started building solar plants in 2018. This way, we now feed enough renewable energy into the grid to power every single one of your Ecosia searches with 100% renewable energy. But there's more. So by running on 100% renewable energy and by using our surplus income in order to finance tree planting projects across the world, we are much more than just climate neutral. Each search is removing substantial amounts of CO2 from the air. By planting trees, we absorb CO2. And by producing renewable energy, we prevent CO2 from being released. But that's still not quite good enough for us. In 2019, we're becoming the first company to produce twice as much renewable energy as we need. This way, we feed enough renewable energy into the grid to power your searches and to crowd out dirty energy. So when you're using Ecosia, you're not just fighting climate change by planting trees, you're not just uh, running on 100% uh, of renewable energy, but you are actively supporting the energy transition to a, a fully renewable energy system. With the climate emergency upon us, we have no time to waste. By using Ecosia, you can both remove CO2 from the atmosphere by planting trees and prevent CO2 from being released in the first place by accelerating the transition to a sustainable, renewable future. And so because of this, and because Ecosia invested in renewable energy, um, Ecosia can be referred to as a carbon negative organization because it goes beyond just being carbon neutral. Um, because because we uh, not only sort of offset all of our, our, our own emissions, but we plant trees which are sequestering vast amounts of carbon as well. Um, and this is a, just a quote from our, our CFO. And actually, just to just to mention another thing here is that even though Ecosia plants millions of trees, we don't use those trees to offset our emissions as an organization. Um, you may see, um, you know, lots of, of sort of other companies saying, oh, you know, we can we can provide an offsetting service for for, for your company. And and, um, and and this is something that we don't really agree with at Ecosia. We, we don't think that trees should be planted for the purpose of offsetting um, you know, dirty emissions from, from organizations that are, are sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, are directly involved in, in, in the fossil fuel industry. Um, we, you know, while, whilst trees do um, sequester carbon, um, we, they actually just do so much more. You know, it's the, the local impact on the, lo on the people, it's about improving the, um, the soil fertility of the land, and we don't really think that uh, trees should be used in this way. And when you have sort of alternative energy sol solutions, which are, are generally, um, you know, uh, quite efficient in, in, in the way they, 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 they operate. So at Ecosia, we, we sort of offset all of our emissions through renewable energy and produce twice as much renewable energy as, as we need. Um, and then we go further by planting trees, but we do we don't sell like carbon offsets to to organisations or use trees in a way to offset um, any of our own emissions as an organisation. A little bit more information about Ecosia. So for some of the uh, the privacy savvy out there, um, so Ecosia is a, a totally privacy friendly search engine, um, and we never store any of your searches permanently. Um, and we don't use external tracking tools or share any data with, with, with advertisers. Um, and yeah, Ecosia uses um, a secure uh, encrypted service uh, to really sort of, um, you know, give you that uh, internet protection that you need. Um, and it's, a, it's also just, um, uh, it's also a, a B Corporation. So um, this means that Ecosia has been um, assessed through, um, through, through B Corp. Um, and this means that, um, it's, th this accreditation is only really awarded to companies with a really high level of public transparency. 
Um, so yeah, Ecosia has um, sort of shown that it uh, is making an impact to, to the community and to the environment, um, which is sort of um, aspects that um, B Corps are, are required to, to show. I'm just a bit conscious of how much time we have because this video is uh, is five minutes long. So um, I think I may just um, skip over this one for now. But uh, it's a really good uh, a really good tree update, which um, sort of it gives you the opportunity to really meet the tree planting team at Ecosia and uh, sort of uh, sort of see how they decide about new projects to work with. Um, and so yeah, I would advise um, perhaps watching this one. Um, on the YouTube channel um, at some stage as well. It's the Tree Update 25. And yes, now going on to Ecosia on campus, which is a uh, part of uh, what I'm, I'm sort of working on at Ecosia. Um, so we have 20, uh, so we have 250 universities, uh, which are, are sort of uh, have students that are campaigning to make Ecosia the default search engine. And so far, 17 universities globally have now made the switch to Ecosia. And this is a number we're really hoping to, to see increase um, over the coming months and years. Um, and so what is Ecosia on campus? Well, it's a global movement of students that are campaigning to make Ecosia the default search engine at their university. And collectively now, student searches have financed the planting of over 200,000 trees. Um, and that's in the past uh, two or three years. Um, and as more and more universities are switching, we're really likely to see this, this number increase. Um, COVID did kind of slow things down a little bit because campus is closed. Uh, and, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, yeah, in, in, the, in the coming months, this will start to be um, increasing again as universities reopen. And so what do, is it, does an Ecosia on campus campaigner do? Um, well, um, generally spreading the word about Ecosia to students on campus, uh, we provide each of the campaigns with a unique link to download Ecosia through. And this enables us to track exactly how many searches and how many trees have been planted by each university campaign. And we encourage students to start a social media campaign to really sort of raise awareness and, uh, and reach students, um, encouraging them to use Ecosia and explaining some of the, the benefits. Um, and naturally, if campuses were open, um, you know, it's always great to, to sort of get involved at student fairs, uh, meeting the other green initiatives that, that are happening on campus and really being part of the, 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 the sort of university community. Um, and this is something that um, you know we've seen a lot of our, our campaigners take take part in. And um, I mean, the other thing to mention is that you know campaigning for Ecosia can really equip you with quite a lot of, of skills. You know, it's not just running a social media campaign, but it's you know emailing IT and it's finding out the right person, like who are the decision makers at the university to really um, to sort of make the university switch, and and who do, who do I need to speak to? So. Um, it's quite a, a quite a complex role, and it can take quite a quite a few years to to sort of actually um, you know see through in some cases. Um, but each campaign is is different, and this, the students really know um, you know how how best to run the campaign at their university and, and who the relevant stakeholders to speak to are. And so why 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 this focus on universities? Well. Um, with so many students searching with Ecosia each day, it can really have a, a positive impact. So in 2019, when the University of Sussex had switched to Ecosia, searches over the course of the year managed to finance the planting of over 10,000 trees. And this was just from um, being the default in Microsoft Edge. And since then, there's been much larger universities with, um, I think, up to you know, 20, 30,000 students. Um, and it causes the default in, in, in multiple browsers. And in these cases, um, yes, the number is, 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 a, is much higher as well. So um, the, when a university switches to a college, it can really have a, a massive impact. And um, each time a university switches, it really encourages all of the other campaigners and, and uh, you know, sort of hopefully builds some momentum to persuade other universities to follow suit and do the same. And some more exciting news, more specifically for, for Germany. So Ecosia on campus is primarily focused on the UK, and that's where we've seen the most of our momentum. Um, since the University of Sussex switched to Ecosia, um, there's been quite a few other campaigns which have been successful as well. Um, however, in Germany, um, the story is a little bit different. And you know, part of this is because of the way that um, IT is set up um, and also um, sort of the size of the universities, I guess. But what we've, what we've decided to do this term is to um, draft a joint statement. Um, and this basically is um, a, um, a sort of a, a document that you can download from the link in the presentation. 
Um, and it basically outlines some of the key benefits of, of using Ecosia and why the university should make the switch. And we also have some quotes there um, in there from, I think, about uh, up to 10 university campaigns um, showing their encouragement for the university um, to make the switch to Ecosia. And the reason we decided to do that this term is because um, there was a, a campus in um, in Munich that uh, that switched to Ecosia. Um, uh, that, yeah, a M Munich business school made the switch. And uh, we're really hoping to sort of build on that momentum and uh, encourage some other universities to do the same as well. Um, I'm not sure if you have a, a direct link to this presentation, but I can always um, circulate that with you afterwards. Um, I really hope that you will um, take a look at this resource and um, potentially send this uh, PDF to, to your university and your university's IT team to see if they want to get involved with this uh, national movement that, uh, that is sort of um, happening at the moment right now across Germany. And so some of the universities that have switched, as I mentioned, primarily um, UK campuses, but um, we've also got uh, Toulouse Business School in France, KU Leuven in Belgium, uh, Munich Business School, and a university hospital in Germany as well, um, as well as uh, a few other campuses uh, in Spain and the Netherlands. So um, yeah, really hoping to see um, some more German universities make the switch um, sometime soon. Okay, so we now have time for a, uh, a quick tree planting quiz. It's just a few questions and it's just a bit of fun. Um, there's no pressure if you get the, the answers wrong. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to, to scan the, uh, the QR code that's currently on the screen, you can also go to menti.com and type in that password there. I'm just going to begin screen, uh, sharing my screen um, and then we can get going. Let me just select here. Okay, yeah, it's great to see so many of you already joined. I'm just going to give it another minute in case somebody else would like to join. Okay, yeah, I think we, I think that's probably everyone now. Okay, so we've got five questions about tree planting and let's see how we do. So where do Ecosia's tree planting partners get the seeds to plant? Are they delivered by Ecosia? Are they collected from forests around the site or are they imported from other regions? So the question is, where do where do Ecosia get their seeds from? They're collected from forests around the site, and that is the right answer. So most of you got that one right. So next. The seeds are prepared for germination. What does germination mean? Is it when organisms cross-pollinate with each other, when an organism grows from a seed or a spore, or the process of giving to the seeds a German passport? So yeah, what does germination mean? When an organism grows from a seed or a spore, that's great. Nobody selected the process of giving seeds a German passport, which is good to see. And so what happens with seeds that can't be germinated? They are fed to local wildlife, thrown away, or they are st stored in cold chambers. What happens to the seeds that don't necessarily germinate that time? They're fed to local wildlife. Well, the correct answer is actually that they're stored in cold chambers. So just because a, a, a seed doesn't um, sort of germinate um, in that on that occasion doesn't mean that it won't um, ever germinate. Um, and so they're stored in, in cold chambers um, to be used at a later date.
And once uh, planting season approaches, our tree planting partners will prepare the substrate. What is substrate? Is it a mixture of soil and nutrients, soil with protective pesticides, or a mix of native tree seeds? And that's right. It's a mixture of soil and nutrients. So, um, yeah, this is basically just a, a combination of, of soil um, and and potentially compost uh, just to give the, the seeds, um, you know, the, the best start that they can they can have. And the final question. Before saplings can be replanted, they go through a process called hardening. What does hardening mean? exposing saplings to sun and a little water, depriving them of sun and water, or spraying the saplings with pesticides. Yep, and the correct answer is uh, exposing saplings to sun and a little water. So um, this is when the, the, the sapling is really in its infancy. Um, and this is the process of um, sort of uh, moving them out of the nursery and getting them used to being outside and in the, the climate that they're going to be planted, um, just to ensure that they're robust enough and that they will survive when they are initially planted um, in the ground. So let's see who did the best out of this. OK, so Agent X9 looks like they have taken the lead here. Congratulations. I'm not sure who that is, but um, yeah, make yourself known in the chat. <laughs> um, and that was great. No, that's, I think we've all, we all contributed there. So, OK. Yeah, so if you haven't started using um, Ecosia already, there's a link that you can use to, to download the Ecosia extension. So ecosia.co forward slash DHBW. And if you download Ecosia via this link, then you'll be contributing to the, the, the campaign and, and supporting Jennifer and, and uh, you know, her fellow campaigners. But if you would really like to bring the Ecosia on Canvas campaign to your university, then I would really love to hear from you. Um, so, yeah, please do follow Ecosia on Canvas on Instagram. Um, you can also um, email me directly on Ecosia on Campus at Ecosia.org, and I'll be able to provide you with all the information you need to sort of get your campaign started and provide you with one of our tracking links. Um, and also, I'd be delighted to circulate this uh, presentation with you all afterwards. Um, just so that you have the joint statement, um, and that just really provides all of the information you need to to um, to sort of uh, yeah raise the idea with IT in your university and and to sort of get the ball uh, rolling there. Um, but uh, yeah, please do follow Ecosia on Campus on on Instagram um, and also the Ecosia on uh, the Ecosia um, account as well. Um, Ecosia has some really great YouTube videos, which I, I think I mentioned earlier. So please do check them out, um, and sort of you can you can see where your trees are planted and the impact that they're having. Um, yeah, more than happy to to sort of open the floor to questions now. Um, yeah, I can talk sort of either about more more about Ecosia and our tree planting projects, or if you have any other questions about um, you know my role or. Uh, potentially the user support role that we're hiring for at the moment. I'd be more than happy to, to sort of go into that. Okay, if you have any questions, you can um, yeah use the chat here on Big Blue Button. I can also raise your hand on the uh, right side. There's a function. And if you're on YouTube, you can also uh, write a comment in the chat and I will read that. So I've got a question here from David. Uh, you generate your profit by people clicking on ads. Wouldn't it be more sustainable if the search engine simply displayed the best search results completely without advertising? 
Well, um, maybe if I just go into to how Ecosia actually works. So we work in um, close partnership with Microsoft Bing to display search results and, and, and the ads. And this is how we generally make money so that we can uh, invest, invest it into tree planting. Um, and we're constantly trying to, to improve the search experience for our users um, just so that you, you can sort of find what you need through looking on Ecosia. And um, it's something that is constantly being improved by uh, you know, the Microsoft Bing developers, but also um, the Ecosia team as well. We, we sort of uh, try to help our users to make more green decisions through through their searches. Um, and we have new features where we highlight organizations that um, are either a B Corp or they um, they have sort of a good sustainability credentials. And so that's kind of the way that we're, we're trying to, um, you know, help help our users to make more sustainable choices. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we make money through advertising and, and that is, um, you know, that's that is is our business model. Um, and and um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of money in, in ad clicks that um, I didn't really fully appreciate um, uh, when I when I first joined Ecosia is. Um, you know, it's uh, there, there's a lot of money to be made there, but um, you know, Ecosia is is uh, using those funds and investing them in in uh, in, in you know environmental and social projects. And so I've got a question from uh, Kiva: um, How do you decide where to plant trees and which tree species are selected? And um, yes, I'm sorry I didn't um, display the, the the video earlier where you get the chance to meet our, our tree team. But uh, yeah, please do definitely check that out on on YouTube. And so we have a, a dedicated tree team of specialists which uh, decide the tree planting NGOs um, that they want to to help finance and support. And so we always work with the the local expertise uh, and plant native tree species which uh, you know belong in that climate. Um, and so it's a combination of um, our own tree team's expertise and knowledge, but also, um, you know, the, the, the sort of expertise of the people on the ground. Um, and we always work with local people from, from day one. Um, you know, we ensure that they understand the benefits that the trees have and, uh, you know, why, what is the purpose of planting these trees in the first place. Um, and you know this is this is one of the one of the big mistakes of tree planting is that if you don't involve the local people from the beginning, then um, you know there's a risk of the trees being cut down again. But if you if you if you work with them and you um, they're involved in the project, uh, they understand the benefits that the trees have, and so there's no there's no incentive for them to be cut down. And so it's definitely a uh, you know collaborative um, uh, way of working, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, sharing expertise to ensure that uh, you know the, the project is going to be a success and we've got a question from sandra so thank you for this interesting presentation i'd be interested in hearing how you got into ecosia um what you studied and people from which fields are mostly hired at ecosia yeah that's a really great question sandra and, and I, i'm a bit of a a unique case actually so um the, the reason that I, I i've been working for ecosia um for two years now and um, how I how I got my job is when I was at university, I started a campaign to make Ecosia the default search engine, and I started the Ecosia on campus movement. And um, I managed to persuade the university to switch, and, and then I started to help other students to, to do the same. And so um, Ecosia saw what I was doing, and and uh, that they they you know they offered me um, a, an internship. So um, I moved to Berlin uh, two years ago, and and have been you know continuing to grow Ecosia on campus, but also kind of supporting um, different teams uh, w where I can. Um, and, but we actually have a, um, a, a job role that we're, we're hiring for at the moment. Um, in the beginning, I mentioned that um, part of what I do is, is user support. So answering inquiries from, from users that reach out. And we're actually hiring um, for uh, an, an English and a, a so part of the job role, it, they, you know, you need to speak English, but you need to also speak either German or French fluently. Um, and so I'm sure some of you from Baden-Württemberg, you know, have no problem with German, unlike myself. But, um, you yeah, know, please do have a look at the the, the, the job role that we, we, we sort of um, we posted. We are looking for uh, some, a student to work 20 hours a week um, answering user inquiries. Um, and joining the the uh, user support team. So um, yeah, please do have a look at the the job role and and uh, yeah, feel free to to apply. It was only posted last week, and so we're we're still reviewing applications. But um, yeah, be delighted to um, to, to sort of um, to, to to have your application and um, and uh, to sort of 
uh, yeah, potentially potentially have you work on the team. So um, yeah, it's uh, we do occasionally post um, entry level positions like this. Um, and the best thing to do is really just to keep checking the Ecosia page and, and checking Ecosia on LinkedIn because we always post our vacancies on there as well. Um, and so um, that would probably be a, a good place to, to, to start. Um, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I, I, I studied anthropology at university um, and I, I believe that it, like what I'm doing now isn't necessarily anthropology. It's more um, it's more like uh, business development I, development, I would say. Um, and I've kind of just learned that through through on the job training, um, to be honest. And and while I really enjoyed studying anthropology, um, you know, it's not something I, I do day to day, but it has really given me um, a way of, of um, sort of writing and talking about our projects with, you know, a respect to the local people and and uh, and sort of that that cult cultural un uh, understanding. So I think that um, even though um, you know, I'm not directly working, you know, in anthropology or an anthropology role at the moment. It, it really does relate to the, the work that we're doing at Ecosia. And and, um, and so I feel that, um, yeah, it, it has, you know, well equipped me with uh, working in a, a non-profit organization. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I would just maybe say another thing about, um, you know, looking for, um, for jobs, you know, it's not well, for for me at least, it hasn't necessarily been about you know what what you, what you've studied, but it's about the experience that you you have and and the work experience. So, yeah, I would really just encourage you to to apply and and find internships and and just you know get as much experience as you as you can. Um, and and that kind of is you know transferable skills to to any role. And and you know for myself, it it I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do, but um yeah, the more the more you work and the more different roles that you try um, you know you then realize you know what, what you do want to do and what you don't want to do and, and that's just as important so um, yeah I would yeah really encourage you to, to get as much experience as you can you know while, while you're still still at university um, because it will definitely sort of help in the long run and I've got another question from Kiva so do you advertise all companies websites or do you select companies based on sustainability and it's a very good question, actually, um, and one that we're getting asked more and more often. Um, so, because we we display Bing's ads, uh, companies that are companies that want to advertise for Ecosia, um, they they do this through the Bing um, ad network. Um, so we don't really have a, a much control over the companies that want to be displayed in search results. Um, and the companies that, that do want to be displayed in Ecosia, they also get displayed on, on, on Bing and uh, you know, other um, internet search engines as well. So there's not, a way, there's not a way to like exclusively advertise on Ecosia just yet, um, but um, that is potentially something that we will work out with Bing um, in the future. But um, yeah, at the moment, we, we don't really have too much of a say over, over who is you know, advertising on Ecosia. Um, but it's the way that we make money and it's the way that we then can invest in tree planting and uh, and sort of have an impact um, through that service. But um, no, it's been really lovely speaking with you all today. And um, Jennifer, I'm not sure if um, everyone has access to the, the PDF that, that I've uploaded. Um, I know that I can see the slides on the screen here, but um, yeah, it would be really great to to share the um, to share the joint statement with you. So yeah, please download the the PDF through through um, Big Blue if you can. Um, and uh, yes, if you are interested in joining the Ecosia on Campus movement, then um, you know I'm I'm always here to help answer any questions. Um, and uh, yeah, be really delighted to to hear from you. Okay, then uh, thank you very much, Fred, for this interesting talk. And uh, we will upload the presentation slides on the um, website of the Sustainability Weeks. Um, they will be available um, in the media library. Yes, it's still posted now. So you can download them there. Fantastic. Well, um, I'll make sure I send that through to you, Jennifer. Um, but thank you everybody for, for joining the, the stream today. It's uh, yeah, been really great to talk to you a little bit more about Ecosia and how you can get involved at your university. Um, and yeah, as I said, I'm always here to, to answer any questions that you have. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the Sustainability Week. 
Thanks a lot, Fred. <laughs> okay, all the best. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers then. Bye for now. Bye-bye.